Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, yesterday's plenary session was devoted to education city universities, the research accomplishments, three distinguished universities known for their research excellence, while Cornell Medical College, uh, Dean Javid Sheikh, and Carnegie Mellon, Assistant Dean for Research, uh, Dr. Majid Sakar, and Texas A&M A &M, Dean Mark Reichold. They drew a compelling picture of their plans and achievements. With acknowledgement to QNRF when and where due. Today's plenary session, as you have noticed, is devoted to homegrown variety of institutions, ICT Qatar, QNRF, and QSTP, and Qatar University. QNRF provides a level playing, playing field with transparent rules and top-notch top referees for research institutions inside and outside Qatar to compete for funding and prestige. The competition is fierce, but fair. Researchers, however, tend to collaborate. Fortunately, there's only one goal to shoot at, the problem at hand. Before I talk about its programs and their measurable impact, I would like to say a few words about the research strategy that guided our work. Qatar National Research Strategy, QNRS, potential research areas to meet national needs. Research needs, before QNRF was established, let me first uh, mention that, before QNRF was established, Qatar Foundation commissioned a study to identify Qatar's needs and formulate a research national strategy. This slide lists headlines of the findings at the time. Gas and oil development, now continued natural gas and petroleum production is critical to the well-being of Qatar. No other single economic activity approaches the economic and social importance of hydrocarbon extraction. For these reasons, gas and oil development would clearly be among QNRF's priority research areas. Research could inform decisions to optimize the longevity of production and the minimization of environmental impacts. Specific research issues could include optimal management of the resources and the national perspective. During last uh, Qatar Foundation board meeting in uh, February 2010, I presented QNRF research projects awarded in areas relevant to the oil and gas sector. At the time, uh, there were only two cycles uh, uh, at hand. One astute member of, of the uh, board remarked that the projects were relatively few for such an important area in, for Qatar. It was true, and I could not explain it. Now, I venture to say that the basic data necessary for researchers to work on were not available. Such data is an important national asset. Qatar Petroleum is currently availing its specific research needs through carefully selected research partners governed by corporate research agreements. Dr. Maney could perhaps elaborate on that further.
Diversifying the economy is, is the second uh, area. Now, although Qatar's gas and oil reserves are enormous, economic dependence on a single commodity constrains economic options. More so, even a fully developed oil and gas sector will not necessarily generate a diversity of employment opportunities appropriate for a range of talents that Qatari citizens possess. A more diversified economy with robust export and service sector and an innovative domestic base could, in the long run, contribute to a more sustainable economy and society. The oil and gas production sector alone was credited, credited with double-digit growth in Qatar's economy. This cannot continue for long, although revenue stream will continue, but growth in the economy will not. The experts recommend the service sector should take the slack. We at Qatar Foundation recommend additional new areas such as solar energy, coupled to high-value new materials production for the chemical and pharmaceutical industries. Dr. Maney will perhaps enlighten you with some exciting news, uh, new projects at QSTP. Improving, now, improving the environmental quality is, is a, everything is taken uh, this into consideration in all their research. Every, every project has this provision that while protecting the environment. Improving uh, the health of Qataris. Now Qataris, we have heard yesterday also, that Qataris have higher than expected rates of diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity. Research could lead to health improvements, which in turn has the potential to boost economic productivity. Health sciences research oriented to the uh, health needs of the Qatari population could include basic research, clinical research, epidemiology, and health services research, as well as nutrition and diet, exercise, physical health, and substance use and abuse. This integrated research could include research in biology, genetics, genetic behavior and environment. The uh, strategy embodied in this statement has been totally embraced by Wild Cornell, as we heard yesterday from Dean Javid Sheikh. More will be given by Dr. Maney. Improving water management. The question faced by Qatar and other nations in the region lacking adequate supplies is whether new desalination technologies can reduce costs and mitigate current practices impact on the environment. Qatar could become a regional or international center for research on desalination technologies. The research could pursue new potentially cost-effective technologies and research also could guide policies on the use of reclaimed water from non -potable, for non-potable uses. Now, uh, expanding participation of women in the workplace. QNRF and, and others didn't have to do much on this in this score because Everything was taken care of under the guidance of Her Highness and uh, ladies like Dr. Hassa and Dr. Sheikha and Ms. Ned and others have really done a great deal to, to expand the participation of women in the workplace. In fact, some of the figures I will give on research results will illustrate how far this has gone, maybe too far for some. Now the vision. 
This is the guiding statement for our work and research. Qatar Foundation envisions research as a catalyst for expanding and diversifying the country's economy, enhancing education for its citizens and the training of its workforce, fostering improvements in the health, well-being, environment, and security of its own people and those of the region. Now, this is uh, the outline of uh, the main uh, presentation. There's an over I will, I will deal with each, each of these uh, as they appear. Uh, established in 2006, uh, it aims at build, build, to build nat uh, national human potential by using research funding and other activities to accelerate development of opportunities for education and training of, in basic and applied research in Qatar. Fund research that focuses on related national needs raise Qatar's international profile in research and expand, expand non-QNRF non funding. Now this is uh, the menu of the programs launching chronologically. Uh, the first one was undergraduate research experience program launched in 2006. Now we are in the ninth cycle. It's been a smashing success. It really unlocked research in, in the country. It is uh, designed for Qatari students and faculty in Qatar. It's not open for outside. It is our maiden voyage, as, as I said, uh, and it was chosen because it was easier to execute uh, the scope is limited, the period is uh, short, six months, and any uh, deviation or something going wrong could be rectified easily. The next program is the National Priorities Research Program. That is the flagship of, our, uh, of QNRF. And then, then uh, I will deal with the National Priorities a, a bit later. We'll just complete the menu. Biannual research survey. This is, a, this is a survey done every two years. Then conferences and workshops. And secondary school research experience program, also a program launched and uh, subscribed to now. And the Young Scientist is also launched in, in 2010 and subscribed to, and I will give facts and figures about it later. Uh, exceptional National Priorities Research Program also launched and it's still work in progress. And the next program would be Distinguished Fellowship Program in 2011. We have commitment from the highest level and we have what it takes, I think, to carry out the job. Now this uh, made in voyage, as I said, it's, uh, it's every six months. There are two cycles per year. The inaugural cycle was launched in November 2006 and now ninth cycle has been implemented since then. The, this is the, end, the national priorities program, goals and designs. It addresses key national regional and global needs through research, accepts individual or collaborative, small or large proposals spanning between one and three years, uh, and encourages multi-year, multidisciplinary, multi-institutional projects, collaborative projects, partnering researchers and academia from different campuses, governmental or private institutions inside or outside Qatar. Partnership between institutions in in Qatar and outside, uh, projects one to three years duration with budget up to $350,000 per year. Exceptional proposals budget can be up to five million, which extends from three to five years duration. 
program frequency one cycle per year, and inaugural cycle was launched in 2007. So far, four NPRP cycles are running concurrently. Now, it has a, there is a, a split of fund, 65% uh, or more in Qatar and 35% outside. The split of, of effort is 50-50 and submitting institutions are in Qatar, only in Qatar. And collaborative institutions are uh, in Qatar and outside and they are ge geographically cover practically the five or some say six continents. Now, uh, in the Arab region, Arab participation institutes, there were 271 institutions submitting, submitted proposals in collaboration with Qatari institutions. Now these, I should be getting the, the list of the, there it is, um, back, this is the Arab. Awarded Arab Collaborative Institutions, there's uh, in Tunisia, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Jordan, and Lebanon. And these are the institutions that have been awarded. And this slide shows uh, awarded Canadian collaborative institutions. And also you could see the names of, uh, of the collaborative institutes, all very distinguished universities. The American ones, 558, quite a large number, but only 63 of them were awarded. There it is. Uh, all the big names are there, as you can see. Uh, there's MIT, there's Mayo Clinic, there's, Mass uh, there's John Hopkins, and all the home campuses of the Universities of Education City are, are there. And uh, as you can see. Now, in the United Kingdom, uh, these are the university, among them Imperial College and University of uh, Cambridge. And European institutions are Helsinki, and then there are uh, French institutions and German universities and uh, research centers like Fraunhofer and Max Planck and Italian and Norwegian and so on. Asian and Australian, uh, again it's about 18 University of Australia and uh, Monash University of uh, Beijing University, Hong Kong University, and so on. Auckland. Now, sorry.
facts and figures. Europe statistics, total uh, submitted proposals, 847, and number of awarded proposals, 412, and number of awarded students. This targets the students, the undergraduate research. So there is a fair number every cycle. The total has surpassed 1,000 last year. And uh, Qatari students out of the total are 390. Uh, number of female students, 312. There is a disproportion. And 79 male Qatari students. The faculty are 63. The MPRP statistics for the fourth cycle, uh, the fourth is ongoing, so there are no statistics, but here are the statistics on the first and second and third cycles. Letters of intent, you see they are increasing, and submitted proposals are also increasing. Submitting institutes in increasing and co collaborative institutes are rocketing. Uh, number of key investigators in thousands and institutes, uh, countries, as you see, 33, 46, 61. Awarded proposals. Uh, the first cycle budget was $25 million, then it was increased to $86 million, and the third cycle was 130. I think the fourth cycle will be even bigger. Uh, for the Young Scientist Research Experience Program, the, uh, here are the statist statistics, 33 letters of intent, number of awarded proposals, 14, uh, number of submitted proposals, 11, and number of awarded, sorry, this is, this is wrong, this is 14, this is number of, uh, considered proposals, and then number of awarded proposals, 11, uh, number of proposals, uh, six. Uh, the budget allocated is $1.37 million. Uh, one unique feature in QNRF is to establish research offices in all the local institutions participating in the, uh, in the research endeavor. So far, there are 40, and the majority are private sector, and some, um, in addition to the universities, the, the, the big names. There's also Hamad Hospital, and there's Shifallah, and Science and Technology Park also is participating. And uh, these research offices are the, con the focal point between QNRF and the submitting institution. It, it looks after the vetting, the, the proposals, and it looks after the budget and the spending the allocation spent on everything. This, is, this has been quite successful. Number of publications so far, I think from the figures uh, uh, mentioned yesterday by the universities, th this could be uh, not quite complete, 203 from, for the NPRP and 53 for Europe. They could be more. Invention disclosures, uh, they are, uh, they were so far 10 and could soon rise to 18 as we, are, we have been informed, two of which were granted provisional acceptance. So, uh, the website is a friendly, user-friendly website, quite uh, uh, up-to-date and interactive 
And there's one testimony which I like personally. There it is. He is uh, an assistant professor from University of Tampere in Finland. That's the equivalent to Manchester. Thank you very much.